All right, everyone. Well, welcome uh, to this brief tutorial on building next generation NCLEX questions utilizing uh, H5P. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to walk through uh, a few steps in building just one example of uh, these uh, questions uh, utilizing the interactive book uh, feature. Uh, or tool rather in H5P. Uh, we utilize the interactive book because it allows you to uh, mix all manner of different types of multimedia uh, with question types in a single module. And this is really beneficial to give the learners that sort of case study experience in which they are able to browse through uh, data that's presented and then leverage that data to come to the best conclusion when answering questions. And they're able to actually navigate back and forth through different parts of the book. Um, now, I've already gotten a start here. Uh, you can see that uh, on my screen right now is the uh, interactive book introduction, uh, which gives just a brief overview of what the students will be doing. And then down below, we have the learning objectives. Um, so I've got that part built out and then on the next uh, tab here, which you can see on the left hand side, uh, I can navigate to the handoff report, uh, which we have a video um, that is provided and I can click on play to uh, play the handoff report. All right, and so uh, a couple of things I'll mention is that for these handoff reports, um, we will certainly have them captioned um, so that the captions are built into that video content when the learner eventually views them. Um, and also we can provide transcripts alongside the videos as well. And this is the case both for video-based content as well as audio-based content. Uh, so, for example, if you are building a case study in which you want uh, a, a report to come in by phone uh, or by dispatch, uh, those are options as well. Uh, so, you can, you can be very creative when it comes to adding content into uh, this environment, which is really great. Now, uh, at this point, we're looking at uh, this uh, interactive book from the viewer perspective. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go into the editing uh, view of this uh, tool. So you can see what that looks like and we can start to build out our first question uh, for this case study. So at the top, I'm going to click on edit to go into the editing view. All right. So here we are in the editor for the interactive book. Um, and so you can see on the uh, left hand side, uh, we have the navigation where we can add pages. Um, and so this is where you can kind of section off uh, uh, parts of your case study for the learner to go through. And again, the learner can always go back and forth between different sections of the book uh, to gather the information they need uh, to answer the questions. Um, I'm going to jump down to the handoff report page um, because what I want to do in this example is I actually want to put a drag and drop uh, question right next to the handoff report video because uh, I'm going to have the student actually reference that video when answering the question. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, the pieces that we've already built here. So I added in a text header for handoff report, and I've also added in the video itself. I'm going to collapse these two, 
and I'm going to add a new piece of content. And when I do this, uh, if I click on the drop down under content, you can actually see all the different types of content that uh, H5P allows you to put into an interactive book. Uh, you can see there's quite a few uh, different pieces of content that you can put into the book. And this is always changing. So at the time of me recording this video, these are the tools that are available. Uh, I'm sure months and years down the line, uh, this will change. But uh, at this time, uh, these are the tools that are available. Now, as I said, uh, in this example, what I want to do is I want to create a drag and drop style of activity. And what I'm aiming to accomplish is I want to provide a list of uh, client findings uh, that are presented in the handoff report. And I want the learner to look at those findings and I want them to determine what are the priority cues that are impacting immediate care. Okay, so, you know, doing some critical thinking and determining what are the priorities. Um, and so we're going to do that through a drag and drop. So I'm going to go down to drag and drop. I'll click on that. Okay. And first thing I'll do is I'll give the drag and drop uh, question a name. And in this case, I'm just going to call it question one. If you have some other naming convention, you could of course use that. Um, and then we have our first uh, batch of settings. Uh, we're not going to add a background image. We're just going to have a plain white background for this example. Um, although there are times when you may want to do that. And uh, below that, we can set the task size. Now, what I found, or what I find to be uh, the best way to do this is I'll start building the actual question. And if I find that I'm running out of space, I'll go back to this setting and I'll tweak it. Uh, so for now, I'm going to leave it as is but odds are I'll probably come back and change it. So let's go over to the task tab. Now this is where you actually build the question itself. In the case of drag and drop, uh, you've got uh, three uh, tools um, that you are gonna leverage. You have the add drop zone tool, uh, the text tool, and the image tool. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be using image in this example. I'll just be using the drop zone and the text. Um, now, I'm going to start by actually adding the drop zone first. Now, this is the uh, section where learners will drag to uh, the place where they are going to move their choices. Now, as I said before, um, the uh, goal here is for the learner to identify uh, the priority cues impacting immediate care. And so that's the label that I'm going to use for the drop zone. So I'm going to click on add drop zone. And you can see it's asking for a label for this drop zone. So I'm going to grab that terminology. I'm working off of, off of a second screen right now where I've got some of this already typed out. So you'll see that I'm just going to kind of copy and paste some of this information as opposed to typing it in. So I'm going to paste in that label. Okay, now I do want to make sure the label is displayed so students can see it. So I'm going to click on show label. Okay, uh, a few more settings down below. We'll keep opacity at 100. That's fine. Um, you can uh, include tips and feedback if you want. Um, this is very useful if you want to have basically uh, helping bits of information to the learner, um, either to guide them as they're making their choices, which you could do in the tip text, or you can display feedback based upon their performance on this question, uh, which is very beneficial. Uh, we might revisit that a little bit later. For now, I'm going to collapse that. Um, we're not going to do this first choice because we're going to allow for multiple options to be put into this drop zone. However, I will uh, turn on the auto align feature just to keep uh, the uh, experience for the learner nice and organized. So I'll check that box and I'll click on done. Okay, so we have our drop zone and we can move it around. Uh, we can make it bigger like this. 
Um, we're going to want to make sure there's enough space that the learner can drop multiple choices in. Okay. And so there is our drop zone. Perfect. Okay. So that's where learners are going to place their choices, their answers. What we need to do now is we need to add in a uh, header for the reported client, client findings. Okay. So we're going to click on the text tool and I'm going to put in that label reported client findings. And uh, you can see I can modify the text up above. I'm going to set this to heading two. And you'll see I've got some check boxes down below here. For now, I'm not going to touch any of those. You'll see why in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to leave those unchecked and I'm going to click on done. Okay, so there is my header. I'm going to bring it up over here so it's on the left and I'm going to make it a little wider. Okay, and now you can see I'm kind of running out of space. Uh, the header is blocked out by the drop zone. So this is where I'm actually going to go back now and change the size a little bit. So I'm going to go back here to this first tab. I'm going to set the width to 800 pixels. And the height, I'm actually going to make that taller as well. Set it to 500 pixels. There we go. That gives us more space to kind of play with as we're uh, building out this question. And we can always go back and adjust them again later if need be. Okay, so we've got our uh, header for the client findings and we've got our drop zone. Now we need to add the uh, choices that the learner is going to be able to pick from. Now to add in the choices, we're actually going to do the same process that we did for the header. I'm going to go to the text tool. Okay. And now I'm going to add in the first choice uh, that will be presented, which is going to be history of asthma. Okay, we're going to add in that choice. Um, and let me take the bolding off of there. Okay, now uh, a key difference from when I added the header uh, to adding this choice is that I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select the drop zone that this choice is applicable to. Um, now this is what changes the information from just read only text into an actual interactive element is when I check this box and I click on done, you can see that now instead of being just text, this is actually going to be a box that the learner can click and drag and actually drag into the drop zone. Um, I'll take a moment actually at this point to point out something. So for this question, uh, I only have a single drop zone, okay? The priority cues impacting immediate care. That's the only drop zone I have. Uh, a nice thing though about the drag and drop uh, question type in H5P is you can actually add multiple drop zones. So uh, just for the sake of example, let me show you what that might look like. So. I could add in another drop zone. I'm just going to call this drop zone two. I'll say show label and hit done. And I'll put that one right down below here. You could do it side by side. You could do it one above the other, whatever you feel works best. Um, and now if, if I go back to that uh, history of asthma choice that I made earlier, I'll click on it and I'll click the pencil to edit it. Uh, you can see that now I actually can choose uh, which of the drop zones can this choice be placed into. Uh, an important note, uh, this doesn't mean which drop zones are the correct answer. Uh, this simply means which drop zones can this choice even be put into regardless of whether or not it's correct. Uh, can it be placed into the drop zone? So I could choose uh, both. In which case, this choice will be able to be put into this one or this one. Um, a little bit later, I'm going to show you how to indicate the correct answer. Uh, but this is kind of uh, handy if you want to build out a question in which you're going to have multiple uh, drop zones. You can do that in H5P, which is really, really cool. All right, but uh, for this question, we're only going to have one. So I'm going to take this one out. 
I'm going to make this bigger again. Okay, and now we're going to add in the other choices. So the next choice that we'll add in is the handoff report mentions that he plays football. So we'll add that in as a choice. We'll move that up here. Adjust the size. I like to try to make the size of each one the same just for consistency. It tends to make uh, the UI a little cleaner if they're all the same size. All right. Uh, the next one is we're going to provide some of his vitals. So I'll put in that information. Okay. Move it up here. Adjust the size. Perfect. Okay, next one. The handoff report mentions that there were cigarettes in the vehicle. We're going to add that as an option. Okay. Um, we'll add in this one. So you can see for each one, I'm just putting in the potential answer and making sure that the uh, drop zone is selected so that the learner can choose it as an answer. Again, regardless of whether or not it's a correct answer. Okay. Now this one's a little bit longer. Let's see. Okay, so you can see that for this one, um, it's a little bit longer, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Um, you can kind of decide how you want to handle that, whether you want to just make all of the boxes a little bit longer so that they all fit on one line. It's, it's a stylistic choice. Um, I would just say it's worth taking the time to make sure that aesthetically the question looks good just so that the student's not confused. Um, and everything's kind of laid out in a logical way. Okay, add that one. Okay, and then we're going to add one more. We'll add in the end title reading. Okay, cool. All right, so you can see now, once again, I did kind of run out of space down below. So we're going to go back here to the settings, and we'll make this just a little bit uh, taller. Um, let's see if we do 900 pixels. Oh, that was the other way, actually. There we go. Perfect. Okay that in a little bit okay cool that's looking pretty good all right so now given the space that I have uh, I'm just gonna make this a little bit of a bigger drop zone um, and now we've got uh, all of our choices uh, populated in so now what we want to do is we actually want to indicate what are the correct answers. So right now, all of these choices can be dragged into the drop zone, but which of them is actually correct? Uh, that's what we'll set next. And to do that, we're actually going to go back to the drop zone and edit the drop zone. So if I do that, click on edit, and you can see that now all of these options are populated because I had indicated th that they are all potential choices for the drop zone. And for me to indicate the correct answers, I just check the boxes. So history of asthma. Okay, we got the vitals. We got this one. Uh, O2 saturation. And this one. Okay, so those are the options that we want the learner to choose. So I've indicated those as being correct answers. So now I'll click on done and we're all set um, now 
One other thing uh, that I actually neglected to do um, is I never added in the actual question. Uh, I, I, well, I've added in all of the the components to answer the question, but the actual question itself, uh, the prompt, I, I forgot to add that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of space up here at the top. Uh, so I'm going to resize this a little bit. Uh, we're just going to bring this all in a little bit and try to make some space to add in that question. As you build these, you'll start to establish a little bit of a process. And so, you know, over time, hopefully you'll be able to avoid having to do too much uh, tweaking. Um, it can be a little time consuming. Um, and I find that there's always, you know, no matter how much I prep ahead of time, I always have to go back and tweak a little bit. Um, but uh, so let me grab the question text. And we're once again going to go add in a text box. And I'm going to paste in the text of the question. There we go. Okay, so I'll click on done. Actually, you know what? I might do this. Let's just see what this looks like. I'm going to set question one to a header. Okay. And sometimes this will happen where you'll add an element and it gets kind of buried behind the other elements, but I'll grab it. Okay. So that will work. Um, however, once again, we are running out of space a little bit. Um, you know what I might do actually, rather than making this question even longer, um, let's see, I could actually make this, uh, these options two columns. I feel like given the layout that might actually make more sense. So I'm going to grab these, resize them in a little bit. Okay. And you can, of course, you know, shuffle the order of these. Um, they don't have to remain in the same order if you want to reorganize them. And actually, I'm going to move this big one so it's at the bottom. Okay. Let's see. Move that just a bit. Give these a little bit of spacing so they're not on top of each other. And actually, let's move this one down here. Make it a little bigger. Okay. All right. Awesome. Looking pretty good. I'm going to bring these down a little bit so that our header can be brought down as well. Okay. Nice. Excellent. That's looking pretty good. All right. So now uh, we're going to see what this looks like uh, for the learner. So I'm going to click on save. And that will bring us back to the, uh, the viewer of the interactive book. And so if we go to the handoff report page, you'll see we've got the video. And now down below, we have question number one. Uh, and it tells us to drag and drop what priority cues from the paramedic handoff report impact immediate nursing care. So let's start by uh, choosing the correct answers. So that would be history of asthma, that one, that one, and that. I'll click on check, and you can see I got a five out of five. I got all correct answers. Okay. Um, and you might be curious what this looks like if you don't get correct answers. Let's, let's do a partially correct answer. So let's do history plays football, uh, vitals, uh, cigarettes, and let's just do that and we'll see how it uh, scores it. Okay, so what you're seeing here is uh, it actually scored it in such a way that uh, the incorrect answers negated the correct answers. Um, and of course, I also didn't choose some of the correct answers as well. So the end result is I got a zero out of five. 
Um, and so the, the, the grading of these uh, uh, elements kind of depends on what choices the learner makes. Okay, uh, And if I do not get uh, a correct answer, I can click on retry to try again. And it will move those answers back and I can continue to attempt uh, the uh, question until I get the correct answers. Um, now, one final thing I want to point out to you before we wrap up this example. Uh, I'm going to go back into the edit mode and I'm just going to show you uh, if I go back to the question. So here's our drag and drop question. Um, I'll go into the, uh, where is it? Um, is it in here? Oh, uh, yeah, I can go down to the uh, feedback down below. Uh, so here is where I can actually add in uh, preloaded feedback based on how the learner does. Um, and so I actually have some rationale that I want to add in. Um, now, it's up, you know, obviously you can determine uh, how much information you want to provide the learner based upon how they perform. Uh, in this case, I just want to provide some rationale if they get the correct answer. If they don't get it correct, I don't want to give them any additional information. I would rather they go back and uh, listen to the, uh, the, the, the handoff report again uh, and, and attempt from there. So what I'll do is I'm going to add in a range here and I'm going to say um, from, oops, hold on. Uh, let me add in some rationale. Okay, here we go. So uh, from zero to 99%, I'm going to actually uh, tell them to uh, review the handoff report and try again. Okay, so from zero to 99%, that is the message that will be displayed. Uh, but if they get 100%, I'm going to actually paste in the rationale that explains, okay, you got it correct and here's why it's correct. Okay, so I'm going to click on save to save that. And if we go back to the question, and one more time, I'm just going to, well, first we'll do an incorrect answer, check. So you can see, review the handoff report and try again. Uh, but if I choose the correct answers... and hit check. Now you can see that rationale is displayed. So this uh, is a great tool in terms of um, providing learners the chance to apply their knowledge, uh, to think critically through a case study, and really contend with a variety of different questions. Um, and so uh, we've, we've found great success with leveraging H5P to create these sort of experiences. Um, and uh, if you are interested in leveraging it and exploring more with it, we certainly encourage you to try it out. And of course, uh, let us know what uh, questions you have. So thank you very much for watching.